Are you sick and tired of the same old job? Are you looking at your spreadsheets for Q4, Q1, Q2, Q3, and you don't like where that chart is going? You don't like where that percentage is? You don't like where that line graph is? You're going to have to come on back because what we're going to talk about today may help you elevate your career, grow your business, and a whole lot more. It's Nez Nation Live. Come on back. Prime time, y'all. Welcome, welcome one and all to Nez Nation Live. This is your personal branding 101 live stream podcast show. It is I, Professor Nez, your personal branding coach, online business owner, speaker, author, actual business communications professor. So good to see you. Come on in. Come on in. In today's show, you can see it right there, Online Reputation Masterclass. We're going to be talking about personal branding. We're going to get you ready for 2020. We're going to get you out of the same job, the same career that you've had your whole life. I'm going to show you, teach you exactly how you can create a presence online that is going to elevate your career. It's going to grow your business. It's the best way to grow your business and a whole lot more. We're going to jump right into it. The one number one question I keep getting most of all, I'm going to answer that today. If you're wondering what personal branding is and what in the world are you talking about, I hear this term, I know, I get it. I've heard it a million trillion times. I'm going to give you the simplest definition. This is going to be clear. It's going to be concise. It's going to be understandable. I'm going to take your questions. Welcome to this masterclass. You don't want to miss this. Before we jump into it, make sure that you share this out because as you know, sharing is caring. So make sure that you share this out. Let me know where you're joining me from because I'd really love to know. Hey, Eddie Garrison, good to see you on LinkedIn. Let me know where you're joining me from and share this out. If you know somebody out there who is stuck in a rut, somebody who, you know, wants to be a little bit more proactive, not really sure how to navigate this online ecosystem, the digital ecosystem. If you're wondering, if you know somebody who's struggling to grow their business, struggling to grow their reputation, you know, people, I want to share this with you right off the bat. People don't hire your two-dimensional credentials. People don't hire a diploma. People don't hire a piece of paper, aka a resume. They hire your energy. They hire your reputation. They hire how you can solve problems. People do not buy. People do not purchase your credentials solely. Don't get me wrong. Ethos is extremely important. Orlando, Florida. Good to have you, Eddie. Thank you for joining us. Don't get me wrong. Of course, it's 
amazing and it's very, very beneficial to have credentials, but people don't buy credentials. People don't buy from a business. They don't buy from just a business. They buy from an individual. They buy from a person. They buy from a representative. I'm going to dive into all of this stuff today, and I'm going to definitely make sure to answer all your questions in this online reputation masterclass. I am living proof that this stuff works. I have grown two multi six figure businesses with my personal brand. I've got one video on YouTube alone that has garnered me hundreds and hundreds of clients. I mean, dozens and dozens, maybe even thousands of clients. I can't even tell you how many clients that it's allowed me to accrue, it's allowed me to do business with, it's allowed me to even further grow my business, further grow my reputation. This is the 21st century. Personal branding is just a fancy phrase. It's been around for decades, okay? Gandhi had a personal brand. Martin Luther King Jr. had a personal brand. JFK had a personal brand. Shakespeare had a personal brand. Aristotle had a personal brand. This has been, it's, it's been the way for decades, for centuries. This is nothing new. The only difference is, is that the medium has changed. The only difference is, is that you and I have an opportunity to build something long lasting that communicates why people should pay attention to us. Why, what even warrants their attention? What, 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 what do we possess that even demands their attention. And then number three, how can you solve their problem? Because if you want to elevate your career, the only reason somebody wants to hire you is because they've got a severe headache. You need to be their excedrin. The only reason people want to buy from you is you've got a solution to a very specific problem. And without a clarified, clear, concise message, you got goose egg. If people don't understand what you do, if people don't understand what you can give them and what value you can bring them, you've got nothing. You've got Nathan. So it's extremely important. Personal branding equates to one thing and one thing only. Here's my definition. And then I want to jump into the chat. Brian Shulman, how are you? Shulman's going to be on the podcast. Good to see you, Brian. It is BS in the house. Good to see you. Uh, fantastic seeing you, Brian. I met and saw Brian at Vid Summit. I'm going to talk about that too. Uh, you know, I just got back from probably one of the most powerful online, you know, video marketing conferences out there, Vid Summit, that is hosted by Daryl Eves, and it was just a blast. Um, you know, I know a lot of you guys are still recovering, still coming back. A lot of you traveled overseas. I see Doug Hewson in the house, DH on LinkedIn. It's so good to see you. Uh, Let me know. We're multicasting here. We're on Twitch. We're on YouTube. We're on Periscope. And we are on LinkedIn. I am very fortunate to be one of the early beta testers uh, to be inducted into their pilot program. And I love it because I've really built my business on LinkedIn. You can see by the, the thumbnail that, you know, I'm a LinkedIn coach and I help clients and individuals and businesses build their brands on LinkedIn. Uh, I've been on this platform since 2007. So I'm extremely proud of our beloved LinkedIn, which is doing amazing things. I've got a lot of videos on my channel uh, talking about how you can, you know, really build your presence on LinkedIn as well. And, um, you know, you got to go check those out. Go to professornes.com forward slash live streams. Eddie says, people don't want to be sold, but they are willing to buy. Excellent point. You know, the days of selling, selling, and the days, you know, I mean, you we've, the reason why I truly feel that we're living in a time period now that has allowed us to go directly to our audience, these beautiful platforms such as LinkedIn and, and, and more, I'm going to get into it you know, is we have an opportunity here to share, to bring value, to help, to inspire. And it's not that costly. You know, back in the day when it was just TV and radio, uh, even just, you know, when we did face-to-face, door-to-door, you know, marketing, you know, uh, a mailbox, snail marketing, that all costs money. Building flyers, printing out flyers, you know, uh, sending them out, you know, having people help us actually putting boots to the ground. That was costly. Buying airtime on TV, costly. Why do you think I'm live streaming to multiple sites? Why do you think I'm live streaming to multiple platforms? Because it's free, y'all. 
What I'm doing right now is the exemplification of personal branding. I'm not trying to sell you Jack. I'm trying to demonstrate. This is the key difference. Personal branding equals modern 21st century communications. I need to know who you are. I need to know what value you can bring. I need to know what problem you can solve. There's no better way than creating content that demonstrates, creating content that three-dimensionalizes you. I'm going to cover some of these questions that I get all the time from my audience and just from really investigating and researching uh, some a lot of FAQs and common impediments that people face when they're trying to build their personal brand. It's your reputation. You're building your online reputation. You're strategically taking ownership of who you are, how you're represented, how you're perceived, and at what people can, you know, what can they take away from you? There's a difference between self-promotional selling and personal branding. It's really outbound marketing versus inbound marketing. I did an entire masterclass on this as well, push versus pull. It's about demonstrating. It's about three-dimensionalizing. If you've got a product, if you've got a service, demonstrate it first for free. Do a free demo. Do a video on YouTube. Do an Instagram story. Do a blog or article on LinkedIn. Do a live stream on Facebook or YouTube or LinkedIn or Instagram or Periscope or Twitter. Live video is really taking over. And it's the best way to really directly get value from your actual audience. King Lee, how you doing, King Lee? Good to see you. Jose Angel Rios, private detective. Wow, I like that. Now that's a name right there. Talk about a personal brand. Good to see you. We have this opportunity now, Nez Nation. We have this opportunity now to really deliver the goods, to put ourselves out there, to create what I like to call the awareness campaign. It's an awareness campaign. Before I purchase from you, before I hire you, before I invest in you, before I give you my beloved time, which I cannot take back, I need to know what I'm getting into. I need to know who you are. I need to see it. I need to feel it. I need to taste it. I need to know what you can do for me. I need to get a sample. There is no better way of giving samples. There is no better way of three-dimensionalizing yourself, demonstrating, showing rather than telling, right? I, you know, I'm a business communications professor. I've been a business communication professor for over 20 years. I've studied researched, executed the art of communications for over 30 years. This is the new medium for communicating your purpose. It all goes back to Aristotle. There's nothing new about personal branding. There's nothing new about this. It's really covered. I want you to write this down. This is huge right here. These three things. Who are you as the messenger? Who are you as the author? What is it that I need to know about you? What is it that you know, you bring to the table. Number two, what is the message that you're trying to get across? And number three, who is the audience that you're trying to get that message across to? It's author, purpose, audience. Nothing has changed. The media might change, right? It might be radio. It might be in-person workshops or in-person demonstrations. One person, I don't know why this just comes to mind right now is Nikola, Nikola Tesla. You know, um, I want to give a kind of example of this. Okay, before I get into that example, though, but that's my definition of personal branding, 21st century communications. It's modern communications. In other words, if you don't understand the power, prescience, and importance of personal branding, here's my best analogy. You're going to be blockbuster when you could be Netflix. If you don't understand the power, the effectiveness, the leverage the ability to reach your audience, the ability to make an impact. Our mantra here at Nez Nation is we're bringing more humanness to this digitalness. Personal branding humanizes your brand. It puts a face to your resume. It puts a face to your LinkedIn. It puts a face to your business. People don't do business with businesses. What's a business? A building? What's, what's a, I'm not, I don't want to do business with a building, with an office space. I don't want to do business with a, uh, a, a logo. I, wa- I want to do business with people I know, like, and trust. And there's nothing, there is nothing that accelerates trust better, more accurately, more real, more human 
than creating a personal brand. And content is the lifeblood of your personal brand. And I'm going to talk about how you can create consistent content as the name of this broadcast indicates. I want you to be Netflix. I don't want you to be Blockbuster. When's the last time you drove down the street and saw a Blockbuster? You know, Blockbuster could have been Netflix, by the way. By the way, let me know how my uh, let me know how my audio is coming in. If I'm coming in a little bit too loud or if it's coming in okay, I would really, really appreciate that if you don't mind, if you just let me know. Um, hey, Charlie Dog over on YouTube. Good to see you. Charlie, make sure you share this out because as you know, sharing is caring. When's the last time you saw a Blockbuster when you drove down the street? Blockbuster could have been Netflix. Blockbuster could have been Netflix, but they thought, okay, quite wrongly, obviously, huge oversight, obviously, they thought that uh, this whole streaming thing was going to be a fad. They thought that this whole internet thing wouldn't last. Good to see you, Charlie Dog. Good to see you, Lumber Lax. Lumber Lax. Now, that's a name. How are you? Uh, Eddie, I want to get to your point here. I believe people value two things, money or time. Being successful is determining how your brand can solve their problem in one of those areas by either selling them the blueprint or giving away the blueprint and sell the implementation. Well said, Eddie. Thank you so much for joining Nez Nation today. Fantastic. Absolutely. So what Eddie is talking about really is, and, and I'm just going to jump right into it. And I, again, I'm going to answer your questions. Make sure you share this out. Hit that like button. Give me that insight button. Give me that celebrate button. Give me that heart button on LinkedIn. I love the LinkedIn reactions, don't you? Yeah. So I, I want to kind of cover this in several steps. Okay. And um, the first step, you know, in creating consistent content, I want you to be prepared for 2020. Eddie talks about a really, really great thing. It's a great point that Eddie brings up is to really dissect your audience and figure out what it is that they want. Too many of us, when we're creating a personal brand, when we're creating content, and this really, and I've done videos on this too as well. You can go check them out at professornez.com forward slash live streams or just professornez.com, just go to professornez.com. Too many of us, when we're creating content, it's about us, us, us. It's about me, 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 me. It can't be about you, 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 because first of all, nobody cares about you. Nobody cares about you. I hate to break it to you. People care about themselves first. So you have to make people care about you. The only way that they're going to care about what you're saying is, is it have, if it has something to do with something that they are challenged with, a problem that they are facing, an issue, a hurdle, an impediment, something that you can provide that will solve. So, you know, whether it's money, whether it's time, okay, uh, you know, whether it's freedom, whether it's, you know, um, a peace of mind, which can be directly tied to money or time. Um, you know, I, I talk a lot about mindset on my channel. I talk a lot about mindset and anxiety and depression in my content because I'm somebody who suffered from, you know, terrible depression and anxiety as a young man. And I went through every single channel imaginable on how to combat anxiety and depression. And I like to share my findings with my audience. I've got a video right now about uh, how to overcome anxiety and overthinking. It's really, really doing well on my channel because it has nothing to do with me. It has everything to do with you. What problem or challenge you're facing. This is, this is the crux. This is the crux of what I want to get across is it's, you have to think of yourself not as somebody, and I want to break this down into two parts. The first part is, is if you're an employee or if you're a job seeker or somebody who wants to get out of their current position, elevate their career, find something new, don't think of yourself as an employee candidate searching for employment. Think of yourself as a business of one selling your services to the right employer for the right compensation. Because what that does, a lot of business-minded people understand this. And if you don't understand this, I'm going to break that down too in this online reputation masterclass. Don't think of yourself as an employee looking for candidacy. Look at yourself as a business of one selling your services for the right compensation. Because when you do that, 
everything will be spoken about, everything will be communicated in the framework of, I have something that will help you. I have something that will give you value. I have something that will solve your problem. I've said this before. I mean, people don't buy toothpaste, right? Um, just for kicks and giggles. No, I buy toothpaste because it solves a problem. I have a car because it solves a problem. I need to get from A to B, or I want to look good in front of my neighbors. Whatever it is, it's something that hits them on an emotional level, on a logical level, or you know, in a way that appeals to their ego. Um, that's how you create value. That's how you build a business. That's how you build a brand, by providing answers and solutions for your ideal audience, your ideal customer avatar otherwise known as an ICA. Now, really quickly, no problem, King Lee. It's so good to see you. Make sure you share this out before you leave. I'd really appreciate it. Now, before I get into diving deep into your audience, a lot of people ask me, well, where do I go, Nez? How do I get started? How do I even figure out what I want to do or figure out what I want to create content about? I'm going to talk about consistent content creation because I'm a content creating machine. But I want to talk to you about... Good to see you, Lumber. I want to talk to you about how you even identify where sh you should even begin. Okay? And I'm not going to say follow your passion. I'm not going to say do what you love. If that's the case, because that sounds just too bumper stickery, and I don't want to do that. I want to, I'm, 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 if anything, I'm a pragmatist, a hyper realist. And I don't like, you know, I don't, I don't like pussyfooting around. I don't like uh, beating around the bush. I like to be very, very direct, very simple, and very concise. It's not always follow what you love. It's not always follow your passion. Now, if passion and love complement what I'm about to tell you, then guess what? You're, you've hit the jackpot. For example, myself, I'm a natural born coach, mentor, and teacher, right? My father was a professor. My grandfather was a superintendent of one of the first charter schools in the country. Um, you know, teaching, coaching, mentoring, it's in my blood. It's in my DNA. I eat, sleep, live, and breathe this stuff. I love more than anything, and it's not unselfish. It's actually very selfish. I love more than anything coaching and helping people. I love that. I'm a natural born coach and teacher. And so I love that more than anything. So I've built an entire business around that. And I've been very, very lucky and blessed. But I'm not even going to tell you, I'm not even going to tell you to do what you love. This is how I'm going to do it for you right now. I would like for you, if you want to know, where do I start, Nez? Where do I even start to build content around my personal brand? Remember, personal brand is just 21st century communications. It's just you communicating your value to the world, building awareness, and I'm telling you right now, ladies and gentlemen, it works like a charm. Not selling, helping. Not promoting, giving. Not uh, marketing. It's about offering assistance, contributing, collaborating, being a participant in you know the goings on in your industry, in your you know uh, uh, background, so that when people see your name, when people see your content, they go, you know, I always seem to get something very helpful. I always seem to get something very valuable. Glenn Brown, a new client of mine. How are you, Glenn? Good to see you. I got your email, by the way, Glenn. <laughs> I love LinkedIn Live. Don't you love LinkedIn Live? Hey, Brad Friedman, it's great to see you. Welcome. Remember to like, hit that like button, smash that smash button. Larry Snow on YouTube, Midnight Madness, Chaladog. Good to see you, Chaladog. And Kenneth Dunner Jr. on LinkedIn. Great to see you from Sugarland, Texas, just southwest of Houston. Now, how far is that from Lubbock? Because I used to have family that lived in Lubbock. I hope you're doing really well in Texas. This is what I'd like you to do to identify. Glenn, you need to be listening to this over and over again. And Glenn, we're going to talk about this. Glenn is a client of mine, uh, a new client of mine. We're going to be working together very, very soon. I can't wait to take excellent care of Glenn Brown. Good to see you, Glenn. Thank you for joining us. If you're on, if you're on, uh, if you're on YouTube, make sure you smash that smash button. If you're on LinkedIn, I would love it if you would leave comments and share this out. It would mean the world to me. I mean, even if you're on YouTube or Twitch or wherever you are watching us, I'd really appreciate it. We're not live on Facebook, um, so we're 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 live on a couple of other places. Too far, <laughs> too far. Okay, Kenneth, thank you so much. <laughs> so. 
how do you how do you even identify here's step number one how do you even identify where to start where do you even get started here's what i'd like for you to do i'd like for you to take out a piece of paper or just do this on your notes maybe on your notes on your phone or on a word doc a google doc what have you write down you know as many things as you can that you're absolutely you just you just can knock it out of the park things that you excel at things that you're really really good at write down things that people have already always said wow you are just so good at that that is so awesome like that is something that is almost like your superpower if you will um something that you have incredible ability uh, uh, at executing write those things down on a piece of paper and then kind of do a little bit of like you know uh, um, process of elimination you know which one of those do you feel a you're really really good at and then b that you think that you could actually you know not get burned out on creating a brand around that which will require a lot of work none of this is easy all this talk about passive income, all this talk about, yeah, just start a YouTube channel and you get a million dollars in the bank. That's all fooey. That is all bubkus. That is all smoke and mirrors. There's no truth to that. All of this stuff takes exorbitant amounts of hard work. Jen Conian. Hey, good to see you. Jen Conian. Hey, your future client. <laughs> That's right. That is absolutely right. I would lo I love it. Good to see you, Jen Conian on YouTube. Thank you so much. That that means a lot to me. Absolutely. You should be every one of you should be my future client. I will help you. I'm happy to help you. It means the absolute world to me to help you. Are you kidding me? I would love that. So, so identify identify which one of those, you know, let's say you wrote down four or five things that you feel that you're really good at. X out the ones that you're good at that maybe, you know, you're, you're, you feel the most, uh, maybe this is where passion comes in or you feel the most excitement. I don't like to use the word passion and love because they've been abused, but, but circle or X out the ones that maybe do a kind of order from highest to least, which one you feel you like doing the most. So order that, like maybe put one, two, three, four, five, number one being, you know, that's the top thing that I like doing. I'm really, really good at this and I enjoy doing it and then go down the list. Does that make sense? And then hopefully this is kind of a little bit of a, a sort of self-investigation test, if you will, or maybe a self-awareness test, if you will. It's a great way to identify, you know, um, and, and, and understand a little bit about yourself. You know, I mean, what, what is it that people have said about you in the past? What is it that people have, you know, remarked that like, you know, let's take, for example, Eddie, you know, Eddie, gosh, you know, Eddie, you're so, you're so good at, you know, you're so good at social media. Like ever, I just know you can, you can help me with social media. I love how you do social media. I love how you use Twitter. You're so good at Twitter. I just absolutely love it. So, you know, f identify that sort of superpower and there may be more than just a couple of things that you're good at, identify that superpower and then go all in on it. And then go all in on it. Let's say you're a mortgage broker, right? Let's say you're a salesperson. Let's say you're a human resources leader. Let's say you're, uh, you know, an online marketer. Whatever it is that you feel is your superpower and then try to focus in on something very specific about that. This is also called niching down. So try to focus. So you don't want to just be social media. Notice how I got really focused and I said Twitter. So so it's one thing to be good at social media, okay? It's best to be specialized or at least have that superpower be focused and narrowed down to one or two things, right? So for me, it's definitely LinkedIn is my baby. I mean, LinkedIn is where I built my brand since 2006. I'm doing okay on YouTube. I'm doing terrible on Instagram. <laughs> uh, I love YouTube. Uh, my podcast really means a lot to me, uh, you know, and, uh, but, but really LinkedIn is where I really built my, my reputation. That's where I built my brand uh, the most. I'm one of the kind of the first people on the platform and I've just been on there ever since. I love what Microsoft is doing with, uh, uh, with LinkedIn since they bought uh, LinkedIn back in 2016. And so 
this has kind of been my bread and butter. I've got the highest level of audience engagement, almost 20,000 followers. It's not about followers and views, though. It's something I really want to be very, very careful with. Um, vanity metrics are exactly that. It has nothing to do with followers. It has nothing to do with subscribers. Don't get me wrong. I don't believe in false modesty. Of course, I want a billion subscribers on my YouTube channel. Of course, I want as large audience as possible. But it's always, always, always quality over quantity. Now, you might be asking yourself this. Well, hey, Nez, you know, uh, okay, so you've narrowed it down. Social media, okay, I'm really good at social media. I'm really good at AKA, you know, or uh, uh, for example, Twitter. But Nez, there's already all these other people who are really good at human resources, who are really good at sales, who are really good. They've already built brands about, you know, motivational speaking. They've really built brands around anxiety, depression, wellness, health, uh, whatever the plumbing you know, uh, you may say, well, there's all these Twitter experts. How can you tell me to build a brand around Twitter when there's all these other people who've already done that? It always really irks me when I hear this. Don't you understand? This is a capital F fact. Even though there's a billion, zillion, billion people that are doing Twitter and maybe doing Twitter exemplary, doing it in an amazing fashion, there's only one of you. They're not going to do it exactly the same way that you do it. Okay? Your authentic self, your uniqueness, embrace your weirdness, embrace your own personality. There may be a thousand Twitter experts, but there's not going to be one Twitter expert like you. There won't be from now until eternity. They'll never, there may be people similar to you, but nobody exactly like you. And that just because there's other experts out there in your niche or your niche or your expertise doesn't mean that there isn't room for you. doesn't mean that they've got all, the entire market. There's plenty of market. There's 7.8 billion people on planet earth. There's plenty to go around. It's not quantity. It's quality. What is the quality of your audience? I've got almost 3,000 subscribers on my YouTube channel, yet I've built a six-figure business around my YouTube channel. How did I do that? By creating content, brain-busting content, that provides unceasing, unflappable value. By, by three-dimensionalizing myself, by having an online presence that when they Google Professor Nez, if they're looking for a personal branding coach, a LinkedIn coach, when they Google those terms, I come up. Why? Because I've created content consistently. So the first thing is step one, Tom Nash, Philip McLean, McLean's in the house. You best believe the best professor in the game. Thank you so much, Philip. I appreciate that. Pete Rondu. Good to see you, Pete Rondu. Thank you so much for joining. Don't forget to smash the smash button. Don't forget to share it out. Please sharing is caring. As we all know, hit that like button. It would really mean the world to me. There's only one you, y'all. There's only one you. There's plenty of audience to go around. There's plenty to go around. Okay, Brad Friedman says, after you niche down on paper, what's next? How do we let the world know we are the bomb? So, great question, Brad. Now, after you've niched down, okay, and Brad, correct me if I'm wrong, but Brad is all about digital marketing, all about inbound marketing, fantastic stuff. Brad's got a great podcast doing amazing stuff. Now, what's next? How you let the world know that you're the bomb? You create content that brings unceasing value, that helps your ideal audience with their challenges, with their problems. You're not selling a darn thing. Not that there's anything wrong with selling, not that there's anything wrong with promotion, but if you provide unceasing value, if you help, 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 help by creating that awareness, by creating that three-dimensionalization on all of these free platforms. Now, there's some paid aspect to this too. I'll get into that later. But by you creating powerful, valuable, participatory uh, super helpful content that reaches your ideal audience. Who is your ideal audience? Well, you need to discover that. You need to figure out who can, who can actually take advantage, who can actually benefit from what I have to offer, right? 
And where are they living? What platform are they living on? If you're trying to reach 35 to 60 year olds, well, I would definitely think that Facebook and LinkedIn is the place to go. If, you're tr- if your target demographic is 13 to 19 year olds, maybe TikTok, maybe Instagram, maybe Snapchat is the place to go. Twitter, you know, 25 to 55 year olds and above. You know, I mean, you, you got to do some research. You got to investigate. And this is not, there is no secret formula. There is no right way or wrong way. This is a kind of overview. So you're going to get prepared for 2020, but you're going to tweak. You're going to tweak. There is no, this isn't a finite system. It's not, you know, you plug in the thing and you switch the thing and you screw the thing and it's all set. No, no, no. When you're building a brand, it's constant evolution. It's constant change. It's constant tweaking, tinkering. You're going to get there. But the point that I want you to make is start right now start creating content around that superpower, okay? Whether it's, you know, human resources, whether it's online marketing, whether it's plumbing, whether it's you're a lawyer and you understand the law and you can help people. I had a client recently who was a law enforcement officer, retired law enforcement officer. He started creating content on Snapchat about, you know, and this is this is the type of content that he created. Hey guys, it's me, Bill. Here's three ways that you can handle a surprise attack in a parking lot. I'm just going to give you some simple self-defense tools that you can use to defend yourself just in case somebody tries to rob you or somebody tries to, you know, uh, 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 you know, uh, uh, take advantage of you or what have you. Here's three self-defense. He's not selling anything. He is raising awareness. Now, imagine if I'm an employer and I'm looking for somebody and Bill applies and Joe applies, but Joe knows nothing. Joe is blockbuster. He hasn't created one ounce of content. He hasn't created any awareness. He hasn't built a personal brand. There is nothing. When I Google Joe, all I get is a picture on Facebook that's faded and from the beach. When I Google Bill, holy macadamia nut, he's got a blog about 12 defense tactics you can use every day. Holy macro, he's got a live stream about, uh, you know, uh, here's, here's, here's the best way to search for, a, a, you know, a security system to defend your home. Holy macro, this guy is providing value. This guy is actually helping. This guy is actually giving back to the community. He is contributing. He's not selling. He's not promoting. It's all about his audience. It's all about his audience. Does that make sense? Brad, let me know if that helps. Charlie Dog, I actually have a question about LinkedIn later. Yeah, just go ahead and ask, Charlie Dog. That's totally fine. Uh, Brad Friedman, quality content is key. What kind of quantity does it take to get your helpful content in front of your buyer persona as much as you can handle? I mean, look, guys, we've got a free pass. We don't have to pay for airtime. We don't have to pay for, uh, you know, a commercial on TV. We don't have to pay for airtime on the radio. We don't have to pay for flyers. We have the ultimate system in front of us. I'm broadcasting live right now on four different platforms. I'm reaching people from Texas. I'm in Southern California. Brad, correct me if I'm wrong. You're in the Midwest, right? Or you're in Denver. Where are you at, Brad? Uh, earlier, uh, uh, I think EG, EG told me you're from, uh, where are you from? Jacksonville? Where are you at, uh, Eddie, again? I call you EG. Uh, EG for short. Uh, I think you're in Florida, right, EG? Look at this. Valuable content plus eliminating pain points equals sales in the end. Exactly. Very well said. Beautifully said. Hey, CK in the house on YouTube. Make sure you smash the smash button. Make sure you share. Sharing is caring. I really, really appreciate it. This is how to build your online reputation the best way, the easiest way. Now, I said something about paid traffic too. I'm gonna, I'm basically giving you the exact same formula that I've been using, I've been implementing, I've been researching. I don't go to all these conferences just for kicks and giggles, even though I love it. 
even though I love going to these conferences, but I do this to really bring you guys the best from the best. I don't claim to be the end all be all. I love learning. I have an eternal learning mindset and I constantly try to learn from the people around me. I constantly try to learn from the best and people who've been doing this maybe even longer than I have. So I I love learning just as much as you do. I love to learn from you just as much as hopefully you learn from me. Jackie Lee in the house. Jackie is a client of mine. Good to see you. A lot of clients on the live stream today. Are you going to be a client soon? Well, you should be. How could you not want to work with me for crying out loud? I'm the best in the West. Maybe the East too. (laughs) Good to see you, Jackie Lee. EG in the house. Orlando. Everybody calls me EG. I hope it's okay. You can call me Nez. Everybody calls me Nez. All my friends call me Nez. Charlie Dog says on YouTube, I tried embedding one of my YouTube videos on my LinkedIn timeline but I just get a gray box link when I paste the link. Any advice? I see people embedding their videos all the time. Now, when you say embedding your videos on LinkedIn, like you're just sharing the URL from your YouTube video onto LinkedIn in the, in the actual timeline, is that correct? It should automatically show, maybe refresh your page, um, a gray box link. Yeah, that usually means that uh, LinkedIn is not picking up on your thumbnail or LinkedIn is not picking up on your uh, URL. So that could be just a URL issue, but here's what I would say. I would say don't embed any YouTube videos on LinkedIn. This is this is a great question right now, and it, and it has a lot to do with building your brand because one of the ways to build your brand is to build micro content out of larger content. Like this live stream right now, I, which I usually do, I take snippets from these live streams and I break them down because there's certain parts that I think are really fast, snackable content that people can get really fast on the go. Remember, you have to understand culture. You have to understand consumers. You have to understand behaviors. Nobody has time to watch a two-hour live stream. Nobody has time. And even if you're as riveting, even if you're as you know dynamic as Nez, <laughs> It's just not going to happen. Nobody has time to watch and listen to all that. Maybe if they're driving, this is why podcasting is so good. So what I do is I break this down into little snippets. I would rather you did that, Charlie Dog. I would rather that you broke down your YouTube video into like kind of little previews or a little trailer as opposed to just embedding the link on LinkedIn because here's the thing. The algorithm, this is the same with every algorithm, as a matter of fact. The algorithm always, you know, uh, uh, pumps more juice to content that keeps the end user on the platform longer. So if you've got an embedded link to YouTube and people click on that and it sends them to YouTube, what do you think the algorithm is going to do? The algorithm is not going to favor you. You want to befriend the algorithm. Now, what does that mean? You want to create content that is native to the platform that you're distributing it on. That is a whole another live stream. And I know I have some videos on my channel all about distribution, all about repurposing. Go to professornez.com forward slash live streams. You'll see a bunch of videos like that. But you don't want to embed any videos on LinkedIn from YouTube. You just you just don't want to do that. Yes, Brad Friedman, upload native video to LinkedIn. Absolutely. That's literally it. I mean, you know, it's I always laugh when I see these. I mean, not laugh, but, you know, not in a derogatory way or a mean way. But um, yes, exactly. Actually, that that is something that I'm that is something that I'm actually you know uh, doing a lot more of is just uploading the actual native video straight to because if this is all it's all about awareness, guys. It's not about subscribers. It's not about views. It's not about likes. And now you hear me? Am I contradicting myself? As Walt Whitman would say, yes, I contain multitudes. I keep saying smash the smash button. I keep saying leave comments and hit the like button. You know, I'm do, I'm giving out call to actions because I want this content, this brain busting content to reach as many people as possible. Absolutely, Jackie Lee. Absolutely, Jackie Lee. I'm going to mesmerize you. You're going to get the best of the best. You have nothing to worry about. Uh, so, and I'm also going to share with you a lot of stuff about that too, negotiating salary. Uh, so, so this is, there's no better way, EG and Brad, I think will back me up on this. There's no better way to sell. There's no better way to make money, to elevate your career than to incorporate personal branding, content marketing. 
Show people who you are. Show people that you're a giver. Show people that you want to help them. Get that audience. Get people going, I have to listen to Nez. I have to listen to Brad Friedman. I have to listen to Construction Cronies. I have to listen. Edith Quarana. How you doing, Edith Quarana? Good to see you, Edith. It's all about branding. Okay, this is like top of the funnel, right? Awareness, know you. They have to like you. They won't do business with you until they know you. They won't hire you until they know you. They won't even come close to hiring you if they don't if they don't like you. They won't come close to buying anything if they don't like you because when they know you, when they like you, and they continue to consistently uh, make their presence on your platform, then becomes this last stage, which is trust. And after trust comes transaction. After trust comes transaction. How are they going to trust you by just a piece of paper that says, this is who I am and this is what I can do? How are they going to trust you by just a proposal that is just two-dimensional? You have to three-dimensionalize yourself. You have all these wonderful tools at your behest. Use them. Take advantage of them. Hey, Brad, if it was me, I'd be creating content every day. If I didn't have a family, if I didn't have a mortgage, if I didn't have a professor job that I still do, if I didn't have obligations to my clients, I'd be creating content on a daily basis. Some people call that overkill. Too bad. I'll even use the same content multiple times a day. Why? Because your audience on that specific platform which if you have a big audience like I do on LinkedIn and other platforms, they may not even get to see that content on that specific hour that you post it. It's gone in the sea of content. You can repurpose that content several times. And you know what, let me back up a little bit because I I really want to back up here for a second because this, this needs to be addressed. Before we get into quantity versus quality, identifying pain points, knowing who your audience is, crafting a compelling message. This needs to be, I need to back up because this is super important. What is it that you want? What is it that you're trying to achieve? I'll tell you exactly what I'm trying to achieve. I want to spend more time with my family, with my kids. I want to spend more time doing the things that I want to do. I want financial freedom. Why do you think I'm creating this content all the time? Why am I creating businesses and creating multiple streams of revenue all the time and looking for that all the time? I've got my digital academy. I've got courses. I've got eBooks. I've got affiliate links. I've got membership sites. I've got coaching plans. I've got, you know, you name it. Because why am I creating this awareness? Because I, A, I love helping people. I I was born to do it. Mark Twain said, there's two miracles in your life. Don't ever forget this in his nation. There's two miracles in your life. The great Mark Twain, one of my heroes. The day you're born and the day you figure out why. There's two miracles in your life. I am lucky and blessed that I know what I was put on this earth to do. I feel with every fiber of my being, every molecule in my being that I was born to do this. And I truly feel this, even though this is going to sound really narcissistic and I don't care. I truly feel I'm the best at what I do. I truly feel that. And it's not about competition. I just really feel and know that I'm good at it. I mean, I have over 170 recommendations on LinkedIn alone. Find me a LinkedIn coach. Find me a personal branding coach who comes close to that. I think the proof is in the pudding. This stuff works. So, uh, you know, I would say absolutely. Uh, so, So you have to identify what it is that you want. What is it that you want? And then a great way of doing it, which this is, didn't come from me, is you can reverse engineer it and then, and then work your way up. So if you want to create a business, if you want to create an at-home business, you want to create a coaching business, a consulting business, you want to elevate your career, you want to, you want to be somebody who is top of mind in your company, top of mind in your organization, figure out your purpose, figure out your objective. Okay. There's a reason why a lot of authors, they write the ending first before they even write the beginning, because it helps to know where you're going. Okay. It helps to know where you're going when you start out. If you have a destination in mind, it makes a lot of sense, right? If you've got a map quest that's giving you seven different, you know, avenues to seven different destinations, you're going to be in trouble. You're going to get, you're going to get lost. Does that make sense? Yes, absolutely, Jackie. Create trust. And there's nothing better. And Jackie, this is something you and I are going to talk about. I know you're in this game as well. 
uh, and you're in this space as well, and I can't wait to work with you this weekend. One of the things that uh, is really, really important to understand about creating a personal brand, which the lifeblood of creating a personal brand is creating valuable, high quality, high content, is that, uh, you know, it accelerates trust in such a fast way. I mean, Jackie, you saw my video that I use as basically a CRM tool. I basically use that as a CRM tool. You saw my video. How many other proposals did you get had a video of that caliber? And, and please leave in the chat, Jackie, what percentage of your decision to work with me was based on that video? Video is a great way to three-dimensionalize yourself. Audio content is a great way to three-dimensionalize yourself. I am not belittling or, uh, uh, you know, uh, I am not dismissing blogging. I am not dismissing articles. I'm not dismissing written content, but I would be remiss. I wouldn't be doing my job. Thank you, EG. I appreciate that, EG. EG says, being confident, not narcissistic. Uh, I would say, oh, really? Really? Okay. Oh, oh, none, as in nobody else. Okay, good. And she says 100%. 100%. And correct me if I'm wrong, Jackie. We didn't even talk on the phone before you hired me, before you went through the process and bought my, uh, my package. Correct, Jackie? I don't even think we talked on the phone first. Why? Because there is there really any need to when you three dimensionalize yourself. And I love getting on the phone with prospective clients. I have no problem getting on the phone with prospective clients. I actually encourage that. When you have a brand that three dimensionalizes who you are and speaks for you, as EG said earlier, the sales come in. I am living proof that this stuff works. There's nothing special about Professor Nez. There's nothing even original about Professor Nez. I'm not new. None of this is new. None of this is unique. I'm not special. You can do this too. You can do this right now. You don't need fancy lighting. You don't need a fancy microphone. You have, I mean, I'm going to get the iPhone 11 very soon. Me and my wife, we're going to get it very, very soon. That camera is almost as good, if not just as good, any of these other fancy cameras. As a matter of fact, you don't even need a fancy camera. That's good enough. There's nothing special about Nez. You can do this too. Charlie Dog, I thought I think LinkedIn would be a good spot to post videos to inform people about the kind of racing I do. People don't know how know too much about it. When they find out about it, they love it. Oh, are you joking me, Charlie Dog? It's the perfect place. I'll tell you, here's another thing too. Here's another thing too that I would say, uh, Charlie Dog, and, and thank you so much guys on YouTube. I really appreciate it. Luis is in the house. Good to see you, Luis. Make sure you smash and make sure you share. LinkedIn is probably the only place right now. LinkedIn is, is probably the only place right now that you can actually get a significant reach without putting money behind your content. And I, I want to say this, this is really important to me. I want to, I want to make sure that you guys understand this. This is super important to me. You guys need to understand that even though I'm saying create content, there's nothing wrong with putting a little bit of dinero. There's nothing wrong with putting a little moolah behind some of your content, especially on platforms like Facebook and Instagram. Let's face it. Facebook and Instagram is a business. They've done the smart thing. They have the leverage. I mean, they are a perfect example of what I'm talking about. Why does Facebook, why does Instagram have leverage over us? Somebody in the chat, let me know. Why does Facebook, why can Facebook and Instagram make us pay to get our content in front of people? Why, why, can, why can Facebook and Instagram go, hey, guess what, dude? I'm not going to boost your content anymore. I'm not going to get your content in front of anybody unless you pay me. There's no more freebies here. No more free pass. Now, why can they get away with that? They make billions and billions of dollars in advertising uh, uh, revenue. How can they get away with that? And why can they get away with that? Somebody in the chat, let me know. Because I, we've got a very... One thing, that's, one thing that's beautiful about our awesome Nez Nation audience is you don't get just get the great Professor Nez. <laughs> Here comes that modesty again. <laughs> you don't just get Nez. You get amazing. Look at this. 
You get amazing content creators, amazing business professionals, amazing live streamers, amazing podcasters, amazing creators, amazing individuals in this Nez Nation family. Look at the people in the chat, everybody that's in the chat. These are amazing individuals creating, charting their own course in this online ecosystem, doing amazing things, providing unceasing value. Wow, what a Nez Nation family. Jackie says, I had the option to just have someone overhaul, but I like that you're a professor and your video mentioned that you will teach the key points. Thank you so much. That means the world to me. Yes, start with the gear that you have. Absolutely. They understand the methodology of how their own algorithms work. They know marketers and brands will pay to reach more people, supply and demand. Great answer, EG, but it's actually simpler than that. It's actually way more simpler than that. Jackie, great answer. They've built a successful framework. They have the audience. They have the eyeballs and the earballs, right? Look at how well Instagram did when Snapchat, I don't know if you guys remember this, but Snapchat was poised to kick Instagram off the block back in 2016. It was the red hot app. When's the last time you heard anybody tout or champion Snapchat? Not even the, you know, notorious investors and backers and amazing content creators and influencers, Snapchat influencers, they've all gone to Instagram. Why? Because Instagram adapted. <laughs> That's okay, EG. No problem. Don't worry. I do too. <laughs> Trust me. Believe you me. There's some people that will vouch for this. I get wordy too. <laughs> Yes, CK. CK says Facebook and Instagram have the reach. They have the audience. So listen to what I'm telling you, Nez Nation. Don't sell. Don't sell a damn thing. Build your audience. Build your email list. Create high quality content. Create that engagement. Comment. Respond to comments. Be available. It's customer service 101. Treat your audience as if they're your customers. Treat your audience as if they're a family. Create a tribe. I've created a Nez Nation family. We even have a mantra. Bring in more humanness to this digitalness. Tell me that's not a dope tagline. And it's all sincere. It's all authentic. Bring in more humanness to this digitalness. It really pains me when I hear people frown. I, I mean, I, I recently tweeted about the whole Zuckerberg thing. It just drives me nuts. These successful companies that employ either indirectly or, or directly, millions and millions of people are getting chastised, okay, because they want to create more business. They want to create more. I mean, they're being chastised for, for things that have nothing to do with them. I mean, give me a break. We are not automatons. People cannot influence your behavior unless you let them. You are not stupid. Congress wants to think that you're an idiot. Congress wants to think that if you watch an ad that's fake, oh my God, I'm going to be brainwashed and go do something I'm not going to do. No, that's called being moronic. And I give the American people, I give the public way more credit than what Congress does. It just drives me nuts. I don't want to get started on that. <laughs> Brad says Facebook has the audience. Facebook has the audience so they can get you to pay and your ROI is off the charts. Yeah, so I mean, this is something that I really believe in. And actually, you can call Facebook themselves. Facebook has a great uh, service now where you can actually talk to a Facebook marketing kind of uh, campaign manager. Uh, somebody who works for Facebook can help you with your Facebook ads. And believe you me, they'll vouch for what I'm about to tell you right now. Brand awareness campaigns get the highest ROI. Think about that, Nez Nation. Brand awareness campaigns get the highest ROI. You can still get conversions on brand awareness campaigns, and they're the most inexpensive. A lot some money to paid traffic. A lot some money to putting a little bit of juice behind your best performing posts. By the way, if you want me to do an entire video on how to incorporate Facebook ads for beginners or something like that. I have a lot of experience being that I consult e-commerce shops, Shopify stores, Amazon FBA stores. I have a lot of experience with paid traffic. I have a lot of experience with, 
with Facebook ads and Instagram ads. If you want to see me do a kind of Facebook ads for beginners, I was actually thinking about doing this anyway, like kind of a Facebook ads 101 for beginners for 2020. So go step by step, do a screen share, everything, how to use Facebook ads. Let me know in the comments down below, especially if you're watching this on the replay, but definitely right now live. Let me know in the comments if that's something that you're interested in, because I would love to, uh, I would love to create a video about that because I, I actually have been thinking about doing the ultimate Facebook ads tutorial for 2020, really step-by-step step, all the way through. You have to take advantage of YouTube pre-roll ads. You have to take advantage. I mean, look at your favorite creators. I mean, I see ads from Sean Cannell. I see ads from Sonny Leonard Doozy. I see ads from Mary, Mari Smith. I see ads all the time from these influencers and from these creators. They're not doing that for kicks and giggles. They're doing it because it works. They're doing it because that's a part of their content strategy. Again, know your objective. What is your objective? What is your objective? Figure out what it is that you want. Figure out what is your sort of end game or the end result that's going to satisfy you. What is it that you, like if somebody gave you a magic wand, if Nez gave you a magic wand right now and just said, you know, you could just, by the snap of your wrist, you could get everything that you want right now, what would that look like? That's a great question. Leave it in the comments down below. What would that look like if somebody handed you a magic wand and you could just, with the snap of your wrist, get exactly what it is that you want? Do you even know what that is? That's an interesting point. Do you even know what that is? This is why I talk about on my channel all the time, self-actualization, self-investigation, mindset and messaging. It's all about mindset and messaging. If you don't know who you are, how in the world can you expect other people to join you? If you don't know who you are, how in the world can you expect to craft a compelling message? It's impossible. It's impossible. Super Dave on YouTube. Good to see you, Super Dave. Super Dave USA. Make sure you smash. Make sure you share. Sharing is caring. Have you guys shared yet on, on LinkedIn? Have you shared this live stream out? Well, yeah, it's the same thing I think about education. Jackie brings up an excellent point. Um, Anthony Fleischman Jr., how are you? Good to see you. Welcome. Jackie says, uh, I want to get back to this. Hey, Marlene Silva. Good to see you, Marlene. Jackie says uh, something really interesting. Government entities are traditionally slow. We have a dissonant where we live in a reactive society, and that's okay. Change takes time. Very well said. Brad Friedman says, magic wand, give me financial freedom. Well, Brad, you're, you're doing everything beautifully, uh, uh, and I would love to work with you. I think you mentioned how can we get to work with you. Just go to professornez.com. And there's a tab there that says work with me. Very simple. Or just email me. If you're interested in getting some personal coaching or any help, kind of help beyond these free live streams, by all means, reach out to me uh, at professornez.com or just email me, nez at professornez.com. CK says, I would wish for a fully loaded film studio, studio with post and audio production all complete. Yeah, but why? I'm going to probe you for this, CK. Why do you want that? You have to go deeper. That's cursory. That's surface only. How, what, you need to go deeper than that. So why do you want a fully loaded studio with post and audio production all complete? And I'm not picking on you. I'm trying to help you. CK, you know how much I love you. You and I have had great conversations. CK is an awesome member of the Nez Nation family. EG, I got to be honest with you, man. I'm very excited that you're here. I really mean that. It's nice to have you with us, EG. I appreciate it. Thank you for sharing. You see, you, you look at what Brad, Brad went all the way. Brad said, give me financial freedom. Now, what is the fully loaded film studio with post and audio production all complete? Go deeper. Why do you want that, right? See, it's, it's really about probing. And this is, this is something I probably should have started with. I apologize. It's really all about probing. And, and I know, don't take that the wrong way. <laughs> Charlie Dog, no jokes. <laughs> uh, you know, now if you're in it just to make content because you love creating, I mean, I'm very blessed. Not only do I love creating content, not only do I love helping people, but I also, you know, uh, I also love... Uh, having my own business too. And I also want that financial freedom too. I want that economic freedom. I want to be able to, 
you know, uh, God forbid if something happens, I want to be able to say, yes, I can, we can handle that. It's a, it's a great way to handle those kind of issues. But I also want to feel purpose-filled and I want to feel like I'm doing something meaningful. Again, going back to the Mark Twain quote, there's two miracles in your life, the day you're born and the day you figure out why. This is how you figure out why. Keep asking that question why. Go deeper. Why do you want to build a personal brand? Because it's important. Why is it important? It's important because I know that I need to compete with other people. Why do you want to compete with other people? I want to compete with other people so I can get the ultimate job or the ultimate customer. Why do you want to get the ultimate job or the ultimate customer? So that I can you know, pay my bills. Why do you want to pay your bills? Because when I pay my bills, I'm at peace of mind. Why do you want peace of mind? Because when I'm at peace of mind, my family's happy. You see, you see where I'm going here? You want to go deeper, go deeper. Keep asking that why question. Does that make sense? <laughs> Charlie dog. Charlie, I know where your mind was headed before you even thought it. <laughs> ah, Charlie, I know where your mind was headed right from the get go. You can't fool me, Charlie dog. So good to see you, Charlie. Are you, am I going to see you guys at Vid Summit next year? You know, I've gone to Vid Summit four years in a row, and I got to say, one of the biggest values that I get from these conferences is not necessarily the sessions. Don't get me wrong. The sessions are very valuable, and they're very informative, but it's the, it's the people. It's all about the people, man. The value is in the hallway. That's where the true value is. Stop probing. Okay, I'll stop. <laughs> CK says, uh, I love playing with the gear and I would like to attract more people to my team and make awesome content. Why? I'm going to go even further. What's the point of that? Why do you want to do that? What does that do? Go deeper, CK. I promise you, it may seem like I'm picking on you, but I'm not. This is going to take you deeper. This is going to take you. You got to know your why. You have to know your why. Hey, thank you so much, Kenneth. I really appreciate that. Thank you. I really appreciate that. That means a lot to me. I want to get back really quickly. Um, I want to get back really quickly to what Jackie was saying. Yes, these government entities are super slow. And this has been my problem with education for the last 20 years that I've been teaching at the university level. Education is at a snail pace. I don't know if Philip McLean is here. Philip was a student of mine at Chapman University. Education moves like this. The world... Life moves like this. It pains me to no end, Jackie Lee, if you're still here. I hope you're still here. It pains me to no end when I hear my, you know, students come up to me after they graduate. Nez, I can't get a job. Nobody wants to hire me, even though I have a master's degree, even though I have a, you know, degree at this esteemed business school or what have you. Nobody wants to hire me. You know why they don't want to hire you is because you don't have real world skills. Because, you know, and I'm not, this is speaking from somebody who loves education, especially self-education, but I love education. It's my beloved baby. It's how I really built my, my reputation, my career. Why do you think my brand is Professor Nez? All my, my, my name came from my students, y'all. My name came from, I didn't, I didn't come up with Professor Nez. My real name is Nezafati. And so everybody would call me Nez for short. Say, hey, Professor Nez, Professor Nez. And it just, it had a great ring to it. I mean, we're talking, this was like 20 years ago. Uh, it had a great ring to it. And I liked the way it sounded. I thought it sounded cool. It was easy to say rather than my whole last name, which can be kind of complex. And Professor Nez was born. And so I picked Professor Nez because of my audience. You see, it's all about your audience. You got to serve your audience. Education really deeply saddens me, Jackie which is part of the reason why I created my own academy here at beyondtheboxacademy.com. This is an academy where I am basically taking my 30 years of experience in coaching, mentoring, and teaching and distilling that into one academy where I help you with your mindset and your messaging. I got a flagship course called Personal Branding, How to Make Money with Your Personal Brand 101. And uh, um, I'll tell you right now, I'm going to give you guys a coupon code right now if you use the coupon code NESNATION, you will get 30% off that course if you want to go ahead and buy that course. Uh, obviously, you know, this is, you don't have to, you can just hang out with me here. But just in case, uh, I'll give you, don't use the hashtag, use uh, NESNATION and you will get 30% off uh, uh, my premier flagship course, Personal Branding, How to Make Money with Your Personal Brand. Yeah, it really, really pains me and saddens me. Uh, um, oh, Pete's going to be at VidSummit. Nice. Dave, you got to make it there. 
Charlie Dog says, I'm actually glad I got a virtual pass. Uh, found out my dog likely has cancer. Oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. So I watched him while laying. Oh, that's cool, man. That's really sweet. I wish you nothing but the best. Olympic Couch in the house on Twitch. Good to see you. Uh, I want to hear what EG had to say here. EG, his magic wand wish was my own academy to help others do what I know about digital content creation. I love teaching others what they may struggle with. Fantastic, EG. I love the way that you said that. That's beautiful. Marlene, enough real, li enough real and live connections that I could move people when something needs to be done, like clean water, protection for women in violent countries, protection of children, crisis management, and a genuine they that communicates answers. Hey, Marlene, you, you have, I mean, 50 ideas just popped in my head right there to create content. 50 ideas just popped in my head right there that you could create valuable content to build your brand. I need to know who Marlene is. I need to like Marlene. You need to demonstrate. Show, don't tell. And then when I trust you, which no one like lead to trust. It's the no like trust factor. When I trust you, that's when things can happen. That's when not only do you build your super fans, aka your advocates, people who go out there, they wear your merch, they share your content, they speak about you. You know, another way, Jeff Bezos once said that your personal brand is what people say about you when you're no longer in the room. It's your reputation. What do people say about you when you're no longer at the dinner table, when you're no longer at the conference, when you're no longer in the room? What are people saying about you? Are they saying that, you know, man, that guy Nez, boy, is he full of crap. <laughs> what are they saying about you? Are they saying he's lazy? He, you know, he drinks too much. He's loud. He's obnoxious. Or are they saying that, man, he provides unbelievable value. He's an honest guy. He's got integrity. He's got dignity. He's always giving his heart. He's helping as much as he can. He's always got something kind to say. I feel good around him. Don't ever forget this, y'all. People don't buy your credentials. They buy your energy. How do you make people feel? One of my favorite quotes, and I'm going to share this with you right now, is from Dr. Maya Angelou, who recently passed, God rest her soul. And she once said, people will hardly ever remember what you said, but they will always remember how you made them feel. This is called pathos. Aristotle called this pathos. Pathos is a very strong communicative device used in marketing, used in storytelling, used in branding, used in personal and professional endeavors. People, human beings are emotional beings. If you can tap into that in an authentic, real way, not exploit that, not take advantage of that in a sincere fashion, in a fashion that comes with humanness, not selling, not, uh, don't get me wrong, there's nothing wrong with selling. I sell all the time. You have to sell to have a business. There's nothing wrong with selling. Sometimes you're selling in an interview. You better believe you're selling in an interview. But what I'm saying is, is don't start off that way because it starts off that way. You create an impression that it's all about you. Give, help, serve. I never thought I would say this. You know, when I was a young man, the idea of serving others never really hit me on a gut level. Daniel Alegi, yes. Are you in LA still, Daniel? Are you in, uh, are you in uh, uh, the Swedish forest? Daniel, I was really, really hoping to see you, brother. It's so good to see you. Thank you, Brad Friedman. I really appreciate you being, being here today. Thank you so much. Guys, go check out Brad Friedman, the Digital Slice podcast. He is an unbelievable content creator. He's an unbelievable human, beautiful part of our Nez Nation family. It's so nice to have you. Olympic Couch says, just hanging out at my dad's. Very cool. Good to see you. So, Charlie, did you did you go deeper, uh, CK? That was an awesome wish. To, yeah, he's a master prober. I want to be known one day. Okay, CK, I want to hear this. I want to be known one day as one of the best content creators for hire. My end game here is to produce content full time for other people. It's my passion. My own content is to help people learn and earn. There you have it. Now you've gotten deeper. You want to do this full time. You want to be able to say when you wake up in the morning, I don't dread going into work. There's, there's peace of mind there. There's a feeling of purpose. There's a feeling of doing what you were meant to do. That's a beautiful thing, CK. Now you found your why. Create content all about helping people earn, all about helping people become, you know, uh, great content creators, all about helping people learn. Do that ceaselessly. Close your eyes to views. 
close your eyes to subscribers, create, 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 exercise a long game, be as patient as you can be and keep creating and I guarantee you it will happen. Especially if you dive deep, know your audience, know by knowing yourself, beautiful things will happen. Vasilios Contadimas, Vasilios in the house. I was waiting for you, Vasilios. How are you? Make sure you share this out, Vasilios. Uh, EG, EG says, I'm applying to speak at Vid Summit in 2020. Nice, EG. You and me both. Fantastic. EG says, at one point at university, I thought I hard about pursuing a teaching career for graphic design. Oh, that's really cool. Yeah, I mean, we need good teachers, man. And if you're somebody who creates content, those are the kind of teachers that we need. A formal education can get you a job. Self-education can make you a fortune. I mean, you can still make good money with if, with a formal education, but I, I just that if that if your end game is just to make more money, there's got to be something deeper than that. Of course, I want to make more money, but what's what's deeper than that is by making more money, I can have the freedom. To me, entrepreneurism or owning a business, entrepreneur has been a kind of an abused word. But to me, being a business owner is about freedom. It's about the freedom of being with the ones that you love, dictating life on your own terms, and doing what you want to do when you want to do it. That's what that's there's there's a there's a byproduct or there's a deeper why than making a fortune or making more money. And I'm not saying, e.g., that that's what you were saying. That's not your why. What I'm saying is, is that a lot of people think to get in this online game, specifically this personal branding game, that it's all about money, 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 money. Don't get me wrong. Money is important, but it can't be the end why and the all why. There's a deeper why in there and probe for that. Get deeper for that. Investigate that and watch what happens. Lots of running around lately. You and me both, Vasilios. You know, I, I, I miss you guys. I didn't go live last week because I was at Vid Summit. I have an amazing video content that I created at Vid Summit about how to grow and start a YouTube channel, how to start and grow a YouTube channel in 2020. I interviewed Sean Cannell. I interviewed Daryl Eves. I interviewed Pat Flynn. I interviewed uh, Evan Carmichael, Nick Nimmin, you name it. I have so many great creators. Go check out that video. It's on my YouTube channel right now. So how to create consistent content. So we we talked about identifying your superpower. We talked about knowing your audience. We talked about discovering your why. We talked about, you know, a little bit about which platform that you feel you should be on. By diving deep into your audience, you can figure out which platform you should be on. Now, I'll be one of the few people who says, I think you should be everywhere. A lot of people think, oh, you're spreading yourself too thin. F that. If I've got free airtime here and free airtime there, if I if CBS, NBC, Fox, MSNBC, and uh, you know uh, Channel Five are all giving me free airtime, I'm going to take advantage of that. Go where the attention is. Go where the go where the eyeballs and earballs are. I say that constantly. A lot of people don't like that. Too bad. I really truly feel, and I'm living proof that it works. Uh, yes, I'm on LinkedIn as well, CK. Yes, I'm on, on LinkedIn as well. Am I missing a lot of the chat here? He's a master prober. <laughs> Thanks a lot. <laughs> yeah, you're absolutely welcome, man. Not a problem. Thank you so much, Super Dave. Yeah, I really appreciate it. You're absolutely welcome, Charlie Dog. Not a problem at all. So so there's a lot of people, there's a lot of people, there's a lot of people who think that you should only be on one platform. I disagree with that vehemently. I think you need to be where the attention is. You need to be where. Now, of course, I have a focus. My focus is LinkedIn. My focus is my podcast. But I'm definitely on YouTube. I'm definitely on Instagram. I'm definitely on Twitter. I loved, I'm actually loving Twitter a lot more now. I think Twitter, I don't look at Twitter as a sort of content creation site. It's more of a conversation it's more of, it's a, it's actually a more intimate way of, you know, people, you know, understanding who you are as a person, I think, uh, not just a business person or not just as a career uh, minded professional or what have you. It's a great way for people to get in on your personality. I think Twitter, it's a, it's a, it's just a beautiful way to conversate. I like it even more than Facebook. Um, but yeah, you need to be where the attention is. Now, once you start kind of experimenting on these different platforms, you're going to find your focus because the focus is going to come from your audience. Where is the audience engaging most 
with your content. But here's another thing too about audience. Now, if you're running a business, if you're running a business, it's not about, you know, getting in front of the most people. It's not about working with influencers that have the most followers and the most subscribers. Followers and subscribers don't pay the bills. Followers and subscribers don't get you sales. When you're a business person, it's about getting in front of the right people who are your ideal customers, your ideal clients. That's who you want to build your brand around. And that's who you want to collaborate with. If it's about elevating your career, I can't think of a better platform than LinkedIn, uh, Facebook, Twitter. But definitely, you know, you got to think about Instagram too. And now TikTok, even though now TikTok is, you know, uh, is sort of like Snapchat 2.0 or Musical.ly 2.0, TikTok is going to evolve. I mean, TikTok kind of reminds me of an early Instagram. It started off with this, but then they expanded to photos or they expanded to video, they expanded to stories. TikTok is going to evolve. So TikTok is, I am not even on TikTok. I'm not even on Pinterest. So you got to know where your audience, your ideal customer, your ideal employers, or your ideal uh, uh, presence to build lives and go all in on that. Now with YouTube, especially with Google, it's really important to understand search and SEO. And that's why I think building a YouTube channel, especially because video, we talked about video being one of the ultimate forms of content. Video is a powerful way to three-dimensionalize who you are. I use it as a CRM tool all the time with my customers and clients. You got to be on YouTube. You got to have a presence on YouTube. I'm not saying you have to go all in on YouTube, even though I would if I were you, but you got to have at least a presence on there. I mean, it blows me away when I hear people who call themselves video marketing experts or video experts, but they don't even have a presence on the number one top video platform, which is YouTube. And when I say presence, I'm not saying they have to have a ton of subscribers or followers, but just like some videos on there. I mean, just a couple of videos at least. I'm telling you, I mean, I've seen, we run a social media marketing agency. Okay, cool. We know everything about video marketing. You don't even have a presence on YouTube. Are you kidding me? You gotta practice what you preach. If I call myself a personal branding coach and I have zero personal brand, what does that tell you about me? That's charlatan if I, if I ever saw one. So, so my point is, is when you pick your superpower, when you pick your expertise, let's say for example, that your expertise is video or video marketing, you need to go where people consume the most of that which right now it's YouTube. Even though LinkedIn is getting up there, Facebook watch, eh. Instagram stories, definitely. Twitter video, definitely. LinkedIn video, for sure. I mean, everybody should have a LinkedIn presence, for sure. But you gotta, you gotta, you gotta back up what you say. You gotta back up your expertise with actually coming through. Show, don't tell, demonstrate. Demonstrate your credibility. Own your credibility. Now, when I talk about creating consistent content, Hey, Eric, good to see you. Eric from Modern Day Tech. Make sure you smash that smash button, Eric. Eric, it was great seeing you at VidSummit. Now, when I talk about creating uh, uh, consistent content, this is the question I get all the time. It's really the name of this broadcast. How do I create co uh, uh, consistent content that builds my brand? What, one of the best, best ways to do that, okay, is, you know, I think, and I learned this from VidSummit, and this is something that I've employed myself, and this really comes from directly from Sean Cannell, one of the easiest ways I think to create consistent content is to create a show, a consistent show, a broadcast show. It doesn't have to be a live stream. It could be a video podcast or it could be a podcast or it could be a pre-recorded video show that you put on your YouTube channel. Now, why I think this is the easiest and fastest way to create consistent content, because believe me, you know, I'm a full-time content creator. When I say full-time, I'm not getting paid full-time, but I create content all the time. It's tough to find new ideas. It's tough to keep creating. It's tough to keep your audience interested and engaged. Now, when you have a consistent show, your audience, A, knows what to expect. B, when you have guests on your show, they're really the ones creating the content, right? Because you're bringing in guests that hopefully are going to bring... I have a ton of videos, by the way, on my YouTube channel. I'll leave it in the card up above. I have a ton of videos on my YouTube channel about how to create a talk show and how to create a live stream show and mistakes to avoid, how to schedule them and what have you. 
But I think this is the fastest way to create consistent content because there is no doubt about it that consistency is super important. There's no doubt about it. You have to be consistent. If I go to your LinkedIn page or if I go to your YouTube channel or your your Facebook business page and I see that you haven't created anything, an article, an audio content, video content, a post in over three, six months, recency, you got to understand this is psychology, y'all. The principle of recency is a really, really big deal. People, there's something about that shiny newness. There's something about something that just came out. Look at Netflix. Netflix is a perfect example of this, right? When, you know, uh, the Breaking Bad movie just came out, when Stranger Things just released their latest season. Now, when you go back to Netflix, the idea of watching Stranger Things or watching something that doesn't have that newness to it, it just doesn't have that same luster, that same appeal. So consistency is absolutely essential for building a brand that attracts the right people, for building impact. So, so I think creating a show, you know, uh, essentially a talk show where you bring on guests that can help you and your audience, you can have a conversation with them. You're not necessarily creating or you're not being forced with the burden of creating. You're having guests come on. You can do it consistently to where it's every Tuesday night or every Thursday night or every weekend or what have you. It's a consistent thing that where, you know, the real work is just getting the guests, which there's so many different ways of getting guests. And there's a lot of smart ways of doing it and wrong ways too. I have videos on this and I'll talk about that. But I think that's the fastest way to create consistent content without the burden of having to come up with a brand new idea or a brand new video idea or a brand new blog or a brand new uh, uh, podcast episode every single week. Because that's, that is where you get really a fast track to burnout, especially if you're just starting out. I don't want you to burn out when you're just starting out, okay? So I think that's the fastest way, and especially for you who are looking to start your personal brand and get things cooking with your online reputation, with your online presence in 2020, think about it. So for example, so for example, my podcast I'll give you my podcast and I'll give you some clients shows that I've been helping them start. My podcast is Nez Nation Live, the personal branding 101 podcast, helping you to build your online reputation so you can earn more, stress less, and grow faster. So I bring on experts, experts on LinkedIn video, experts on Twitter, experts on YouTube. I had Nick Nimmin on the show. I have Sean Cannell on the show. You know, I had Roger, uh, the expert plumber, who was one of the first people to get LinkedIn Live on the show. You bring in other guests, right? Other guests who can bring value to your uh, audience and, you know, you do that consistently. See, my whole show, my whole brand is about helping you get your message to the world. So I bring in other people who can help you get your message out there, whether you're somebody who's looking to elevate your career or grow your business. Let's say you're a lawyer or let's say, let's go back to my law enforcement client, my law enforcement client, okay? Uh, my, yeah, yeah, exactly. Peter, did you see the video? Pete, did you see the video that I just released? Yeah. He's like, show <laughs> exactly. Kind of like Gary V too. Um, uh, with my law enforcement client. So he does a show. His whole brand is about safety and self-defense and understanding the law. So what does he do? He brings in experts. He brings in law enforcement experts. He brings in, you know, judges. He brings in clerks. He brings in legal people who can help him, okay? He can bring in legal people who can help his audience by having a conversation, educate, inform, and hopefully entertain his audience all based around his brand, which is all about becoming more adept with self-defense and the law and law enforcement. So, I mean, the examples are endless, you know, plumbing, uh, you're a financial, uh, uh, you know, investor, you're a online marketer, you're a human resources uh, manager, you're the vice president of sales. You know, there's podcasts, there's shows on every single topic. Literally, there's podcasts and shows on every single topic. Whatever your background, whatever you circled as your sort of main kind of, you know, again, I use the word superpower, but that sounds kind of ridiculous. I don't like the way that sounds. Whatever it is that you're the best at, whatever your super talent is, let's say that, um, whatever you circled, whatever you've pinpointed and you focused and you've narrowed down on, 
that's something that you can create into a show that revolves around your expertise by bringing in other people once you build your audience. It's a great way to build your audience too. It's probably the fastest way to build your audience because when you bring on guests that are known in their background, in their in the industry as being a thought leader or somebody who has some expertise, guess what? They are introducing you to their audience because they're going to share the show. They're going to talk to their community about the show because it's content for them too. So not only do they get introduced because they know the value of being on your show, they get introduced to a brand new audience, but you also get introduced to their audience, which depending on if you do it right, could be a sizable audience. Does that make sense? Daniel Allegi, good to see you in the same zone. Sub to Outsider San More. That's a long name. Uh, no, not really. I don't think so. But I hope you're getting value from the show. It's so good to see you, Daniel. It's absolutely great to see you. So I think that's the fastest way to create consistent content. Now, another thing that I think is really valuable, okay, to create consistent content. Let me know if you're still here with me here uh, uh, on YouTube. Make sure that you're hitting that smash button, commenting. Let me know on LinkedIn. Good to see you guys. So another thing that I think is a great way to create fast content is to, you know, look at the different kind of trending news items. Look at trending news items. Look at the trending page on LinkedIn. Look at the trending page on Twitter. Look at the trending page on Facebook or what have you, or even just on Google. Find out what people are talking about. Find out if any of the topics relate to your expertise that relate to your personal brand and create content around that. I mean, uh, I have a perfect example of a YouTuber who one of the, 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 he really, he really tacked onto one of the most popular topics when the whole algorithm apocalypse was going on or adpocalypse. I don't know if you guys remember that. And he created a video about watch time. He created video about, you know, how to get past this YouTube apocalypse or what have you. And that just thrusted his channel. Some of you might know who I'm talking about. That just thrusted his channel to a whole nother level. And it built his audience. It built his online presence. It took him to an all, all time high. And he's just soaring now. Why? Because he paid attention to what people were paying attention to. He paid attention to what was happening in his industry. He paid attention to what was trending in his industry. And you can find out what's trending by looking at Google Trends. LinkedIn has a great daily rundown, what people are talking about. Perfect example, I posted something very recently. Uh, it was trending on, on, on LinkedIn about how, you know, which this is what this whole show's about. It was trending on LinkedIn talking about how, you know, your resume isn't enough. Your resume just isn't enough. So, uh, you know, I mean, that, that I, this is something I talk about all the time. I've been saying this for, you know, maybe the past 18 months that, you know, the future of hiring is not a resume. Your resume is dead. That the future of hiring is your personal brand. People want to see you. They want to feel you. They want to taste you. They want to know who you are. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, that's like literally everything. So, uh, uh, you know, pay attention to what's happening in the news, pay attention to what's happening in your industry, pay attention to what's happening, you know, uh, in the trending lists on various entities, on various, uh, platforms. What are people talking about? That is absolutely huge. It's so good to see you guys. Yeah. Creator insider is a good thing to look at. Definitely midnight madness. Chala dog. Creator Insider is a good one. Okay, one last thing too. And by the way, let me know in the comments. Let me know in the chat. What is your best tip for creating content consistently? I talked about paying attention to trends. I also talked about creating a show with Sean Cannell, who I recently had on a, uh, um, a YouTube uh, uh, interview that I recently did with Sean Cannell, who, you know, if you don't know who Sean is from Think Media, from Video Influencers, he's a huge, huge presence on YouTube. He wrote a book, YouTube Secrets. He's just an all-around swell guy and smart guy, really knows his stuff. He talked about the idea of building a channel around a show too. And I, I tend to agree with him. I have a video, I have a bunch of videos about creating a talk show and how a talk show is really a great way to build your brand and demonstrate who you are and why people should pay attention to you. 
Um, do you have any, do you have any, uh, ideas, tips, comments that you want to leave on how to build content consistently? Leave them in the chat down below, leave them in the comments. I'll come back and check them out. I have one more and then, and then, uh, I want to talk to you about something else too. So how do we create content consistently? Anthony Fleischman Jr. says, having a system, okay, I like that, Anthony, having a system and a process locked down. Elaborate on that. I think what you're talking about is having a streamlined process, right? Having organization behind your content. When do you want to, having having a, a maybe a, even a spreadsheet, dare I say, which I don't do that. I mean, I have my own notes and stuff. But yeah, like having a spreadsheet of, Content ideas, video ideas, live stream ideas, podcast ideas. That's fantastic, Anthony. Absolutely. Yeah, CK, let me know what you thought of it. I read some of it. I didn't read the whole thing, but it, from what I read, it was fantastic. What are your ideas? What are your ideas? Looks like Super Dave read it. So I've got one last thing. So I talked about creating a show. I talked about looking at trending lists and find out what people are talking about. The third thing, and I think this might even be the most important thing, is the way that you can create content consistently is by going directly to your audience. Because if you want to create content consistently, you have to have content ideas. And where do I get my best ideas? From you. That's where I get my best ideas. I ask my audience time and time again, I ask my community time and time again, what you should do this too. This is do this verbatim. It, it is a great way to not only serve your audience, to not only provide high value content, but relevant content. I turn to my audience. I ask them, what are their problems? What challenges are they facing? What struggles, what obstacles, what are you going through right now when it comes to creating content, when it comes to mindset, when it comes to messaging, when it comes to branding, when it comes to social media marketing, what is it that you're facing? What is it that you're going through right now that um, is a really big challenge? Is a really, I mean, I've even used verbatim, you know, uh, answers from my audience on actual titles and tags of YouTube videos. For example, I have a video on my YouTube channel right now. How do I decide whether to create a personal brand or a business brand? I have a video on that. Actually, I have an entire live stream about that. I literally use the exact same, you know, question that was that was posed to me, challenge that was posed to me. I used it line by line, character by character as a title for a video. And I've broken that down into micro content. I've gotten miles and miles out of that content. Absolutely. EG, I'm so glad you're here, EG. EG says, utilizing a content calendar will help anyone stay on track. Yes, it becomes your audience's TV guide. Very well said. They know what, when, and where to consume your content. Absolutely. Well said, EG. EG's in the house, y'all. CK says, I read it front to back. Okay, Anthony says, yeah, things organized, planned, and ready to go when an idea comes to your mind. Now, you might be saying, hey, Nez, I don't have a very large audience. That doesn't matter. You don't have to have a large audience. I don't think you need it. Some people think, well, I don't really, who am I going to ask? I don't have any followers. I don't have any subscribers. Hey, if it's one person, just ask them. You never know what could happen. Or go to other people's audiences. Here's another thing. If I, I have a perfect response to this. If you don't have a big audience, which I, I, would, I would argue what the definition of big is and how you define big. But here's, here's a perfect answer to that. I got to get some water. Go to, um, you know, look at your, look at people in your industry. Search hashtags on LinkedIn. Search, search hashtags on, on, on Instagram. Search online. Find out other people in your industry who maybe have a larger audience than you do. And go check out their content. Go check out what are people leaving in the comments. Look, I'm subscribed to f tons of people in my space, right? I mean, I talked about Sean Cannell. I'm subscribed to Sean. I get video ideas all the time from looking at what people leave in the comments of his videos. This is a great way to find out video ideas too. So for example, if you're a, an insurance agent, okay, or a tax attorney, and you are just starting your personal brand, 
and you don't maybe have a you know sizable audience, which again, I, I think you got to rethink that. All you need is one person. You can ask them endless questions. They can maybe give you 10, 15, 20 content ideas. Search, okay? Search other tax attorneys, search other insurance agents who maybe have a sizable audience or at least a larger audience that you can dip your toes into. Look into the comments, maybe contribute, participate, ask questions, add. You know, this is a great way to get ideas for content. It's a great way because the only thing stopping you from creating consistent content is running out of ideas and time. Running out of ideas and time. So make sure that you uh, understand that these are great ways to create content fast and consistently. And I'm going to answer the time question in just a second, but I want to go over those last three again. Number one was creating a show where you can bring guests and leverage their audience and really have them create the content for you, which essentially they will be by you interviewing them. Okay. Uh, number two, number two was, um, so we talked about creating a show. Number two was um, looking at what people are paying attention to, looking at trends, maybe looking at Google trends, looking at LinkedIn trends, Twitter trends, looking at what's happening in the news. What are people talking about? What, is, what are people tweeting? What are people really focused on in the moment and see if it relates to what your brand is all about? Maybe you can offer a solution. I gave the example that there was something trending on LinkedIn about how your resume isn't enough. The Get Hired Project. They were talking about hashtag Get Hired. They were talking about how your resume isn't enough. I pounced on that because I've been saying that for years. I've been saying that for a long time. Your resume is not enough. And look at me. I'm an executive career coach on LinkedIn. That's what I do. I create brand new resumes. Actually, I don't call them resumes. I call them brands. I create them all the time on LinkedIn. And then number three is go directly to the source. Go to your audience. Ask them directly. All my best video ideas come from you guys. What are your challenges? What are your obstacles? What are you facing? What are impediments? What are hurdles? What are your pain points? What problems are you facing right now? And how can I help? Create videos, create content, create blogs, create talk shows, create everything about a solution to that particular challenge or problem. That is how you create a standout personal brand. EG says 10 engaged followers are greater than a thousand unengaged followers. Vanity metrics are almost false advertisement in the digital space. Exactly. And what I love about that EG is that brands are getting smarter and smarter and smarter about that. It used to be that if you had you know, uh, 500,000 subscribers or 1.3 million followers on Instagram, a brand would look at that and be like, well, yeah, we'll give you $20,000 a post. But now the most important metric is engagement, right? If you've got 1.2 million followers or subs subscribers, but you've got six comments and three likes, something's not right. Those are bought and paid for subscribers and followers or an extremely comatose audience. It's not about quantity, y'all. It's all about quality. It's not about, you know, amounts or length. It's about depth. It's not about length. It's about depth. Always. Anthony J. Fleischman. I think it's important to think with the end in mind. Know your goals and reverse it. Yeah, we talked about that earlier. So, Anthony, you just joined us a little bit late. We did talk about that. You're absolutely right. I learned about you through Dale and the interview you did with him. Networking works. Thank you, Anthony. Living proof. I'm living proof. This stuff works. Hey, yo, you talking to me? What am I, a schlummy? This stuff works. What do I got to do to get it through your head? This stuff works. That's my really bad Joe Pesci impression. Anybody see The Irishman? I really love Martin Scorsese. You know, a lot of you guys don't know this. Another reason why I love creating content is I really come from a film background. You know, I used to create musical scores for independent films, acted, wrote, directed independent films. Obviously nothing of note, but I come from a love of cinema. 
And so another reason why I love creating content is, you know, I, I come from that digital storytelling, cinematic storytelling background. I mean, I love it more than anything. And Scorsese is probably one of my favorite uh, film directors, and he's really got the entire cast back together. We got De Niro, Pesci, Al Pacino, Harvey Keitel. I mean, these are like actors that have been with Scorsese, not Pacino, but the others for like 30, 40, 50 years. I mean, it's insane. I mean, you look at Taxi Driver, Raging Bull, Goodfellas, which I think is probably one of the greatest films of all time, even better than Godfather. I know that's a bold statement, but I do think the rhythm and pace of Goodfellas, the acting, the storytelling, there's not a dull moment in that film. It's just a rock and roll parade, that film. It's just, it's got fast paced, but yet soft and tender and emotional. I think that Goodfellas is probably one of the best films of all time. I would easily say that. Yeah, no, Kenneth Dunner. I'm so glad you're still here, Kenneth. Research laboratory manager. I love it. I love it. Kenneth, you could be the ultimate research laboratory manager. Think about it. Nobody in your background, nobody in your uh, industry is creating content, is creating a personal brand. Think about what you can do, Kenneth. Even if it's just you filming yourself, talking about what you love, talking about research, talking about laboratory tests, exams, or breakthroughs or innovations. It doesn't have to be. Here's another thing too. You don't need fancy tech. You don't need fancy skills. You, the biggest thing about a personal brand is you just got to be, this is the only criteria. You don't need all this training. You don't need all these makeup artists. You don't need, the only criteria is you just got to be capital Y, you. That's it. There's only one you. Yeah, construction cronies. Yeah, I totally, I love that, man. CK, we got to we gotta have more conversations, you and I. I, I really love it. And, and, and you too, EG. We got to definitely connect more. I, I love having you guys in the live stream today. This has been my honor and it's been my absolute pleasure to serve you guys and to talk with you guys and hang with you guys. I want you to know that I've got a podcast, the Nez Nation Live podcast. We're on Spotify. We're on Google Podcasts. We're on Apple Podcasts. We're on Stitcher. We're everywhere you listen to podcasts. Go subscribe to the Nez Nation Live Personal Branding 101 podcast. You will love it. You can put those little ear goggles in your ears. Listen to unbelievable branding, mindset, messaging advice, tips and strategies, guests that will help you build your online reputation in the 21st century. And it's all free. And when you're at the gym, when you're driving in your car, taking your dog for a walk, or just chilling around the house. It's just really pleasant listening, and you'll learn. It's the ultimate personal branding university. Go check it out. And by the way, again, if you want to learn more from Nez, or if you'd like to work with me, go to professornez.com or check out beyondtheboxacademy.com. We've got ultimate courses in there. We've got fantastic step-by-step, uh, uh, -step, hand in hand courses that you could purchase with a code of Nez Nation giving you a 30% off discount. Go check those out. We've got courses on mindset, mindset mastery, personal branding, communications, writing, a whole lot of great courses in there. Go check them out. Taught by Mua, yours truly. Um, I also have a ton more videos. Go check them out. I've got an entire playlist on personal branding on my YouTube channel, an entire playlist on my LinkedIn page, an entire playlist on mindset mastery, anxiety, depression, overthinking, things that I went through as a young man, things that I've been studying the mind for over 28 years. Um, I'm a life coach as well as a personal branding coach. Go check out those videos. I love you. I love you. I love you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here with me today. And I hope to see you guys very, very soon. Go check out that other content. It's going to put some serious wisdom grenades in your dome. Thank you, everybody. I love you guys, and I'll see you next time.